When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stop going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is gayish. The podcast where if you see something, gay something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Gay. Especially in Florida. Yeah. Over and over again. So much. Uh, I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. We're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today... Today... We're going to talk about the totally fun, easy listening... Uplifting, (laughs) happy-go-lucky topic of internalized homophobia. Internalized homophobia. This was requested by you, the listener at home who filled out the survey. So this was a survey request and one that I was like, oh, of course, we need to do this at some point. Yeah, we put a survey out and asked everybody a bunch of questions, which I don't think we're going to ever do that again. Maybe not. I don't know. (laughs) It might have been a one time. We got all the feedback we could handle. (laughs) Yep. Yep. It's very helpful. So thank you. But yes, that is from this is from the survey. So thanks for everyone who filled that out. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Or not. We'll see at the end of the episode. That's true. We'll see how it goes. (laughs) Um, But first? But first, if this is one of your first episodes, just know that we have the timestamps in the episode description where if you want to jump ahead to internalize homophobia, I put the timestamp of exactly where you can do that because we got stuff we got to take care of first. Yep. That's that's, uh, that's exactly what we want to do, Kyle. Tell everybody how to skip our content. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Yeah. First, we have 100 words. We have 100 words. So this is also known as the Use Mike's Hole mm-hmm. feature of Patreon. At a certain level of Patreon, you get access to 100 words and my hole. We'll say them. <laughs> Doesn't matter what they are. Yep. Um, this time, it's from Tim Bosma, one of our favorite Canadians, uh, who is only allowed to post on the Canadians Only channel. On, not on not allowed anywhere else. Yeah. Re- very restricted. Yeah, <laughs> we've we've segregated our Canadians <laughs> as it should be. As it should be. Um, okay, so this uh, I don't know what to do with this. Okay, he says, as a lover of board games, I thought, what if board or card games, but gayer? Mm-hmm. And uh, but then he also puts like what game? So I think I think you have to have both. Yeah. Okay. So Settlers of Catan, he wants it to be Settlers and Caftans. I don't know. What, what's a Caftan? A Caftan is like a moo-moo. It's like, oh. it's like what Palm Springs gays wear. Mm. Like a shapeless, formless. Like That's what I want. Mm-hmm. That's what I need in my life. Um, uh, seafarers of Catan could be semen fairies and Caftans. <laughs> uh, Monopoly becomes Polyopoly. Ooh. Which, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, Tokyo Highway becomes Hershey Highway. <laughs> uh, Cards Against Humanity is Cards Against Inequity. Mm. Um, Yahtzee could be Yas Queen Z. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry becomes Sorry, I'm Fabulous. <laughs> uh, cranium is Blow Me Come. Okay. Uh, Scrabble becomes Swallow. Operation becomes gender affirming operation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Connect Four becomes Docking Four. Or dock for, docking for, dock for, docking foreskin. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Okay. Code names is hanky code names. <laughs> uh, betrayal at house on the hill is bathhouse at house on the hill. Clue is get a clue. Mastermind is masturbator mind. Battleship becomes battle dicks, which I would sign up to play battle dicks. I think. Uh, Pictionary, dick pictionary. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or just dictionary. Dictionary. Yeah. Yep. Uh, killer bunnies become slayer bunnies. Um, guess who is guess whomsels? <laughs> oh, that's from, uh, that's from us. Uh, ticket to ride is ticket to ride that ass. Yeah. And uh, here to slay, which is a real game, he owns it. Is it gets to stay? It's here to slay. That's just <laughs> yep. It is what it is. Hope this was as fun to read as it was to write. And vote Premier Danielle Smith of Alberta for Dickback Buckface Asshole 2024. We'll have to learn uh, more a little bit more about her. I don't know anything about her. Yeah, I should post to Facebook. Fairly early in the year, the ongoing poll for Dick Back Fuckface Asshole, and it could just like be a thing that we oh, roll. Be like a running list. Yeah. 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 That's Mike should do that. Yeah. Future Mike. Yeah. M- the, Mike, this is your reminder to do that <laughs> now that you're listening back to this episode. Oh, goodness. Well, okay. use my hole, everybody. Yeah. Join it's... Patreon and use Mike's hole. Um, and now the news. Shut your mouth hole. It's time for your ear holes. News. News. 
News. News the first. Ron DeSantis, dickbag fuckface asshole winner 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, have you, first of all, have you noticed or paid attention to his footwear? No. He has these just gay ass boots that he wears to like natural disaster locations, which they have a lot of in Florida. Um, just to appear taller or to be those country? That's, that's the thing. It turns out that he wears often wears lifts, shoes with heels. He has like some height. He's vertically challenged and is trying to fix that. Is that legal in Florida? I don't know. It <laughs> probably probably shouldn't be. Um, but uh, uh, he was at a press conference here last week, the day after Valentine's Day, and uh, he was talking about education, not indoctrination, and the woke liberal mob it's sure. trying to impregnate their schools with the jizz of knowledge. I don't know. It's just <laughs> Bu- it, it, buzzword, buzzword, <laughs> buzzword, woke, buzzword. Um, but then one of the one of the reporters asked, "Quote." Governor DeSantis, you have spoken out against the woke agenda of gender fluidity and also coming out against gender affirming care. So I was hoping you could square your opposition to gender affirming care and people choosing their own gender identity with your frequent wearing of lifts and you hoping to choose your own height identity. (laughs) (laughs) I love it so, so much. Um, He apparently, he said, nice try, next, and then awkwardly moved his head in a way that critics have pointed out appears to be a bubble he does when he's uncomfortable. Oh my God, I would hate to be dissected for all the movements I make when I'm uncomfortable. (laughs) This, being in the public eye would be my worst fear. Yep, yep, yep. Um, It's a good, what do you think about that analogy, that question? I mean, if you really break it down, there's some problematic comparisons of like, there's, it's like when you compare it to age, like, but I'm inside on the inside. I'm actually 21. Or so Rachel I can, all, I'm really black. Yeah. 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 But transracial. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think it's a funny question. I like it. I think it points out just some of the hypocrisy that exists in your day to day existence that. I think it's it's a lighthearted, funny comparison. I've heard lots of similar things about like God doesn't make mistakes with people's bodies. Then why the fuck are you pro eyeglasses, you mm. dickbag? Yeah, right? exactly. Like, it's yeah, ki- it's kind of in that space. Yeah, or like God wants you to be five foot two or whatever, Ron. Deal yeah. with it. Yeah, <laughs> suck it up, asshole. Okay, news the second. So a man named Stephen Miles has been. Uh, sentenced to two years in prison for his involvement in the January 6th protests and riots in Washington, D.C. Uh, he's a member of the Proud Boys group and uh, breached a protective perimeter around the Capitol building and engaged in a physical confrontation with police that were protecting the building that day. He is seen in court filings wearing a black T-shirt that reads, Trump 2020, fuck your feelings, and a Make, Make America Great Again red hat, of course, uh, but turns out that he is also known as Sergeant Miles, uh, which is a gay adult film pers- persona. What? Yeah, he's he's um he's this this is him. Uh, he does lots of lots oh. of, of daddy gay porn. He's forty, uh, and um, yeah, he, Sergeant Miles is what he does his his porn as. Uh, he's appeared in dozens of gay videos, including fifty minutes of good sex, scruff in suits, and punishing the whole scene one. <laughs> um. <laughs> he couldn't make it to scene two. They couldn't lock him in for that that second deal. Yeah, and we, I've, I've, I've touched on this in the news a couple of times before. That like, just because you are LGBT does not mean that you're necessarily a good person. Right. That's part of equality. Is that there are good people and bad people that are LGBT, and to treat us as if you should elevate all of us is actually partially the inequality that we don't that we are fighting against let's fight for our freedom to be shitty lgbt people that's right exactly right exactly right um well sergeant miles i guess you're canceled now (laughs) i don't know i'm I'm don't jerk off to this gentleman anymore i guess i what i really want to know 
is how did the Proud Boys feel about this revelation? You know? <laughs> like, Well, and how did the people that he's had sex with feel about this revelation? Did they know this about him going into it? How does everyone feel about it <laughs> is really the question. I think everyone should be pissed off. Yeah, for yeah. For different reasons. <laughs> it's really great when you can piss off both the left and the right at the same time. Yeah. And he's successfully achieved that. In fact, congratulations. Way to go. <laughs> it's a unique skill. Oh, God. Okay. Um, news the third. I'm doing four this week, Kyle. I promise Ooh. it's not a trend. I just couldn't decide. Okay. Okay. Uh, news the third. Uh, the Georgia Senate Committee on Education and Youth met to consider Senate Bill 88 last week, which is a bill that would promote the forced outing of trans youth to their parents and restrict LGBTQ plus topics in schools. It's their version of don't say gay. Yeah. So the bill sponsor spoke about the bill. And then turns the floor over to Jeff Cleghorn, who is a gay anti-trans activist Aww. who has called trans people mentally ill sex fetishists and regularly shares content from groups like Gays Against Groomers and Libs of TikTok. These are the exact arguments that were hurled at gay people at one point in time. And to not be able to recognize that is such a lack of like an inability to translate your experience and the discrimination you face to any other group. It's just like such a... I don't know, like, how do you not understand? How do you not, being gay should open you up to understanding the discriminations of other marginalized groups just by virtue of understanding how it feels? It's just... I'm going to talk in the main episode about the internalized homophobia that's necessary for you to be gay and anti-trans. Ooh, so. I'm going to talk about being gay and Republican. Oh, great. Okay, well, it's all we're, here, Kyle. We're it's gonna, all, it's it's, all right. I, this news is really well-timed, actually. <laughs> um, so the Republican panel allowed four people to speak that had showed up to... Um, give their public comments on the bill. Wow. Uh, included a former president of the Young Republicans, a representative from Gays Against Groomers, a representative from the Georgia Log Cabin Republicans, which is a group of gay Republican activists. And um, uh, and then and then they said, oh gosh, we're out of time and ended debate. Um, wow. that You can't just pick the ones that agree with you and i mean i guess you can senator donzella james um was upset about this and asked how many people here were here we only heard from people in support of the bill how many people here were <laughs> wanted to testify against and uh apparently several dozen hands were raised and none of those people got to speak and uh um senator alana parent raised the point again on a personal consideration she said quote I just can't help but point out for everyone that here, that's here, that it does seem fundamentally unfair to, it's one thing though I disapprove of it to allow no testimony. It's another thing to allow testimony from only one side. Yeah. And um, the bill then passed on a 63 party line vote. Oh God. Um, the, I've seen this over and over and over again, in particular about trans issues. The, the 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 levers of power being used to just not even allow debate. Yeah. Like, just la, 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 don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. No, you can't talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I just saw something on Instagram about the New York Times. Like, the New York Times does this where they only publish one side of things. They don't publish trans writers or things in support of trans people. It's... Yep. It's really frustrating when only one side gets the publicity. Yep, exactly right. Well, anyhow, fuck you, Georgia. Yeah. Right in the behind. Right in the peach. Uh, and then news the last. This one is quick. I just thought it was really, really awesome. Uh, at Fort Hayes State University in Kansas, um, they held a faith and diversity inclusive celebration for Ash Wednesday and they allowed students to choose regular ash or ash mixed with glitter. <laughs> <laughs> so they had Glitter Ash Wednesday. And of course, lots of people lost their goddamn minds about that. Yeah. Um, Libs of TikTok was was uh, one of the main complainers about this. Um, but, but yeah, just just it's just. Yeah. It's fine. Jesus doesn't care that much. It's fine. Jesus, Jesus doesn't care that much. Also, does it matter what you put on your forehead? Like, if the whole point is, like, do, does it have to be ash? Like, does it matter what kind of ash it is? What if it was cigarette ash? What if it was, like, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. None of it matters, Kyle. Nothing matters. No, <laughs> wait. We took this happy story and turned it into a 
sinkhole. Um, that's, that's the awesome. news. That's the news. Well, speaking of people who fill our ash with glitter, yeah, I want to thank the following <laughs> new Patreon members. You nailed that one. I yeah, like that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to butterflies. Oh, oh, just the whole the, like the general concept. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna say yes. I automatically think of the reading rainbow. All lepidoptera or just butterflies? Do shot. I don't know what that means. Moths are also lepidoptera. Oh, okay. Um, the rambling pan man. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, pan, oh God. As in pansexual. I was literally, I, assumed. I imagined a dude holding a bunch of kitchen implements. Maybe. We don't know. We don't know for sure. Okay. Maybe both. Um, and Primrose Varnum. Oh, it's cute, right? I think, I think we know that bitch. We know that bitch? From Discord. Oh, hey. Hi. Good to see you. Um, if you want to join Patreon, get at free episodes one day early, use Mike's Hole to send in 100 words. Uh, we have quarterly Patreon happy hours. We have t-shirts for you. We have discounts on merch. Lots of cool stuff. Go to patreon.com slash gayish podcast. And at this point, we have over 50 bonus episodes that you can listen to. So if you're all caught up and need more episodes, there are over 50 bonus episodes plus all of our bonus segments that we've done. So there's a lot more gayish out there if you want it. Go to patreon.com slash gayish podcast. Do it. Do it. You know, early on, some of the bonus episodes, like episode was a strong word. Yep. But it's been a, a year or two now of like trying to actually make Do a full full length episodes. Episode. But like, yeah, they were still like, I think, good conversations and good content there. So mm-hmm. do it. Do it. Do you want to talk about internalized homophobia? Let's talk about internalized homophobia, Kyle. <sighs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> getting getting loose. <laughs> Getting excited, getting into it. I listen to a bunch of podcasts about internalized homophobia just to kind of like get in the mindset and listen to what other people said about it. And Did you know that homophobia is the name of a Chumbawamba song? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't. It was from their sixth studio album, Anarchy, in 1994. And uh, then they later released a remix of that song that features the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know Chumba Wumba would come up in this episode. I didn't either, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about the history of internalized homophobia. The, we should, the, uh, Derek pointed out is the longest title that we've ever had for an episode. Yeah, for sure. Um, so to, to 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 back up a little bit, we 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 have to talk about what homophobia is and what does it mean for it to be internalized? Kyle? Yeah. Um, the word homophobia we actually know uh, was coined by a guy named George Weinberg, who was a psychologist way back in the 1960s. And it's always been a problematic word. Problematic in that uh, uh, it's a combination of the homo part comes from homosexual and, okay. the, and, and then the, the phobia part comes from the Greek phobos, which means fear, morbid fear or aversion. And so, and homosexual was already sort of a um, linguistically problematic word to begin with. It hadn't been around for very long. Anyway. Why is it linguistically problematic? Um, well, because uh, homosexual, sexual isn't a Latin or Greek root, but homo is. Oh. And so it was already sort of like mixed together. Oh, oh um, that's fine. Anyway, language, yeah, that's how shit rolls. That's how shit rolls. Um, but uh, but the the other the other thing that people have pointed out is that homophobia, or at least what we think about it now as, is not merely fear. Right. Right. Like you'll hear right wing dickbag fuck face assholes sometimes say, "I'm not homophobic. I'm not afraid of anything." Mm. When that's not necessarily what that means. Yeah, it's not like spiders or heights. It's not like. I'm scared of this. this. That's not what we mean when we say homophobia. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, because it, it also it also just means aversion. Like if you say hydrophobic, that means um, things like oil or grease that are um, that that separate from water and, and float to the top or the bottom, but um, doesn't mix with water. That 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 is still a phobia in the chemical sense. Is is oil verse top or bottom? <laughs> it just depends on the density. I yeah, don't think yeah. It, it can't be both. <laughs> oh, one at a time. One at a time. Um, I think this is hilarious. The word homophobia, as near as we can tell, first appeared in print in an article written for the May 23rd, 1969 edition 
of the American porn magazine Screw. <laughs> And uh, it was, uh, they used it to refer to a heterosexual man's fear that someone else might think that he is gay. Hmm. Which I think still counts as homophobia. I guess so. Or at least the root of a lot of homophobia. More on that in a little bit. The the July 3rd, 1989 cover of Screw, uh, the, the headline is Finding the World's Best Hookers. I mean, it's that kind of magazine. <laughs> and it's for straight dudes. Um but uh, uh, it, yeah, it, it's it's the first time that the, that word is used in in print. Interesting. Okay, so what is internalized homophobia? Internalized homophobia had been discussed. The concept had been discussed and even used in studies uh, uh, several several places. But yeah, it's, it's psychologists and and sexologists had had. Um, used the phrase but in popular speech um the the place that gets the most credit for having it be a thing that everybody talks about in mainstream media or whatever is the 2005 book by alan downs the velvet rage oh yeah uh, overcoming the pain of growing up gay in a straight man's world and that title i think better than anything else also gets the gist of what internalized homophobia is where it comes from why it exists we live in a straight world that gives us lots of messages about being gay is bad or wrong and that fucks a person up yeah the ways in which it fucks a person up is internalized homophobia right so so in a uh psychology today article this this person um writing about internalized homophobia just what is internalized homophobia says quote as i've grown to understand it from my friends fellow lgbtq community members colleagues and clinicians Internalized homophobia is what happens when we take the biases, prejudices, and hatred toward gay folks reinforced by society and turn these biases inward back on ourselves. Internalized homophobia can show up in the form of self-hatred, shame, fear, anxiety, and depression for many gay clients, whether we are out of the closet or not. I'm speaking in a collective we here, as this is a concept I became familiar with through my own personal experience recognizing it and working through it. Um... Reading through a bunch of stuff for the the show today, I think I've not I've not seen this list published anywhere. This is a Mike Johnson original. There's 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 four kinds of like you can make a, a square a Punnett square of different kinds of internalized homophobia, and it's I think whether that ra- rage whether the object of the badness is yourself or other people. Hmm. And then are you out or at least out to yourself or not? Hmm. Um, and that, that makes these four different kinds. So there's there's people who are out but still have um, like thoughts and behaviors because of the ways that society fucks us up because of societal homophobia, right? And uh, a lot of those behaviors or thoughts are self-destructive or self-punishing. I think even the most well-adjusted gay person ever it, can, it still falls in bucket one. I, yes. I, I nominate myself for that bucket. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Throw me in that for sure. <laughs> I mean, dude, it's a gay-ass podcast, but still definitely have some shit to work through. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's the thing I most commonly think of, that that quadrant. Number two, people who are out, but still have bad feelings towards other parts of the LGBTQ plus spectrum. Mm. Um, and whether that is... Uh, uh, the like misogynistic femme bashing that happens. Yeah. Um, it, it, like shitting on other kinds of gays. But like I said, during the news, it also like turgs come to mind, trans exclusionary radical gays. Um, uh, people who are like basically trans people become the conduit for the ways in which society fucked them up. Like I, I think that it has to be internalized homophobia that makes us someone believe that trans people shouldn't be part of our movement, part of our umbrella. Yeah. Um, I, I think that they're also, this bucket would be like people who hate that we're trying to reclaim the word queer or faggot. Um, they, uh, they, I, I think it's internalized homophobia that leads to somebody to react super negatively in a way that says like, I can never get behind that word, blah, 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 blah. I don't know about that. I don't know. No. That could be some people, but for some people, I think the pain of being called that growing up, like it's hard to hear that word and have good feelings towards it. I disagree with that sentiment because I believe in reclaiming words and making that 
changing the the connotation then but but i think for some people it might be that mm. <laughs> not buying it well no i mean i think the the it's it's homophobia in the first place that happened 30 years ago when you were a kid mm. that is leading you to feel that way now right and i think that's the very definition of what we're talking about mm. that it's you know society being shitty making you feel shitty now mm, okay i can see where you're coming from um bucket three people who are not out but uh to different degrees might be out to themselves or be questioning and um they do not want to be right and have uh cognitive dissonances uh, dissonance because of the ego dystonic nature of their attraction to uh the same sex these are also self-destructive or self-punishing as we'll talk about later in the episode i put myself in bucket three for the first 30 years of my life hmm. um and then number four is people who are not out probably not even out to themselves who knows but they are homosexual and they turn that into attacks and vitriol against the lgbtq plus community hmm. so uh, there are a lot of studies that actually back up the idea that the most homophobic people are latent homosexuals right and uh, th those people are all in, in bucket four. But in, in every case, there is some kind of dysfunction, and it's related to the way that society treated them. And it, it has been internalized in different ways. Yeah. Um, I like that way of breaking it down. I like the, that, that Punnett square that you just created. Yeah. But they're all fucked up, Kyle. They're all fucked up. It seems like a lot of, like, <laughs> are they all defense mechanisms that we've constructed to help try to keep ourselves safe like or to relieve the the pain of being gay well uh, yes yes absolutely I, I i think they absolutely are and and um different defense mechanisms work better or worse yeah. or are you know more adaptive than others or whatever but i also think that um uh humans are primates like i'm a firm believer that like evolution is real because I'm, I'm not a dumb dumb <laughs> yep. and and we're primates and primates are social animals and bucking against what society thinks or feels or says is a good way to be dead right in in nature right, right. like right. if you if you if you piss off your group or your tribe or your 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 family unit and you get ostracized and kicked out you're almost certainly like going to get eaten by a predator because you don't have the protection of of the the the, the the pack the pack so I, I i think that uh uh we are incentivized maybe on a biological level like on an evolutionary level to uh conform to to be a part of whatever society deems is necessary for us to belong to society yeah and you can see the way that that keeps us safe not like sometimes very literally keeps us safe by conforming by acting straight in certain scenarios by not making not letting your gayness out that can keep you safe in certain countries and certain parts of the u.s yep. like there there's you know you can take that to a literal place um where your internalized homophobia might actually keep you safer yep and keep you from getting beat up criminalized something yep yep for sure and i think I like to say all the time that it's because Jesus. Yeah. But that's not the case, right? Like you, you're a perfect example of that, right? Like you grew up in Texas, not in a religious family. Right. And still had all of these messages that were applied to you that didn't come just from Jesus, but from like physical safety. <laughs> yeah. But I do think it's indirectly from Jesus though. I think Jesus, the Christian right has influenced our society in a way that makes society more homophobic. So I think it is, even though I personally didn't go to church and my family didn't go to church, I went to church a handful of times with friends, but you know, I didn't understand what was going on the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, Delicious crackers though. I ate some crackers once <laughs> when I probably shouldn't have, but <laughs> I think our society is influenced so heavily by Christianity. It's hard to separate the two of what society believes and Christianity's beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. Oh. I, I don't disagree at all. Oh. It's all sort of messy. Yeah. You know, like it, it all it all contributes. It all adds to this just giant bigot sandwich and mm -hmm. 
p- picking it apart isn't isn't maybe it isn't even useful. Yeah, well, I think just analyzing the parts of it help understand what resonates with you and helps you understand yourself a little bit better. I mean, I think we're gonna pick it apart a little bit, and and maybe that'll help us understand and dissect it, and uh, maybe understand ourselves. Yeah. Oh. I bet you have Gata, don't you? I do have Gata. Do you want me to tell you about it? Yeah, tell me some Gata. Okay. I got this from a them.us article by Julie Compton from the 2021 year. Yeah, that's a year. <laughs> that's a year. <laughs> sure is. Sure is. Or was, I guess. It was. Yeah. It's not anymore. Not anymore. It used to be. <laughs> um, this is a study by Moser, DM, Ramos, Angelo B. Costa, and Elder... Sir Kira Santos, I speak Spanish. I should be better at this. Surveyed uh, over 1,000 Brazilian men, all who, Hot. Uh, which were over 18. <laughs> Hot. So it's legal for you to be into Hot. them. <laughs> Um, Look, Kyle. What? Brazilians are hot. Okay. <laughs> That's the, yeah, sorry. I forgot the bullet here. They were all very sexy. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, their orientations, 80% were gay, 17% were bisexual, and 2.7% were men who did not consider themselves gay or bi, even though they had sex with other men. Great. That's an interesting portion that I wish I had more data on. Yeah. What do they think? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I need to add a fifth bucket, Kyle. Those are like <laughs> yeah. bang dudes, but like, I don't consider themselves gay. That's such a fascinating group of like, are you do? Yeah, we've talked about straight dudes, like heteroflexible and straight dudes that bang gay dudes and people's sexualities don't cleanly fit into boxes. Yeah. And I bet a big portion, it's not everyone, but I bet a big portion of those that don't want to label themselves as gay, it's because of our internalized homophobia. Yeah. That's not what this study was, though. What they did is they separated uh, these participants into two groups. Those who saw themselves as mainly masculine and those who saw themselves as primarily feminine. Mm. So 75% identified as masculine Mm -hmm. and 25% identified as effeminate. Mm -hmm. They split those people into three subgroups. Those who wanted to be more feminine, those who wanted to be less feminine, and those who were happy the way they were. Wait, so they, they just broke up the fem group? Or both groups fe- into both? subgroups. Got it. Okay. So there's there's six groups now. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. The men who desired to be more masculine had the most negative attitudes towards effeminacy. Great. That makes sense. That's a logical step. And on the scale that measured internalized homophobia, they scored almost 3.5 points higher. Sure. Which makes sense. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a quiz on internalized homophobia on the patreon segment yeah, right yeah for the patreon segment well not just internalized homophobia homophobia in general oh and internalized can be like one of the components of it gotcha gotcha okay um and the men who had the worst attitudes towards femininity also had the worst mental health outcomes yeah <laughs> so there's I mean, that that's like we can't prove it, obviously. Like the only people who know what's true for them is those people and maybe their therapist or whatever. But like that seems just a open and shut book case of internalized homophobia, right? Yep, like, exactly. <laughs> that This is proving. And so much of when we talk about internalized homophobia, we have to talk about femininity and, the, and masculinity and what those words mean and our associations with those terms and how we present ourselves and how we want to be perceived. Like it all ties together. That has to be part of this conversation. And so it is true that the mask for mask gays are the ones that are more likely to be in, have internalized homophobia and have worse negative mental health outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It's interesting too. Um, Oh, I have so many thoughts now, Kyle. Ooh, okay, say them. I'll start. I'll start with you. <laughs> say them out loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that much about Brazilian culture, but uh, most like Latin cultures that I'm familiar with, the perception of femininity is like a fate worse than death for a man. Yeah. Like they're very highly invested in this sort of male female dichotomy, even more than we are, and we are also very much invested in that as a society. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I just think it's an interesting audience for this study to happen with machismo being, I, I presume, very much a part of, of the 
the dynamic absolutely or, or whatever um and then the 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 other thing that i thought about was there are mask for mask gays but also sometimes on grinder i see like a very masculine presenting person who is like i'm into trans dudes only mm. uh, or trans women only sorry 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 trans women only and that feels to me also like maybe internalized homophobia in that like I'm I'm specifically looking for a, a a penis, but attached to the most feminine person that I can find that it's attached to. Interesting. It it, it feels in the realm. Yeah, yeah. I know I want dick, but I'm only into women, so that can help preserve my feelings of masculinity for myself. And I can't put my finger on it because I don't engage with those people because I think they're weird and terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, But it, it, it definitely, it feels like in a compensating kind of way. Yeah. Like they don't have to confront their own feelings about their gayness somehow. Yeah. I don't know. Speaking of not confronting your own feelings, I'm going to just throw out one more study. Great. Um, this is also from them.us article by Henry uh, Giardina from 2020. And 38% of gay Republicans <laughs> view their homosexuality as a personal shortcoming. Yeah. God. And 41% claim they would pre- they would prefer to be straight altogether. <sighs> Jesus, that's so tragic. It's, I feel so bad. And But I the, the thing is, I get it. Yeah. And I grew up and then kind of took a certain action. And, you know, the the feelings that you had as a kid, it's like at one point you talked about a lot of shitty things that in your quadrants, a lot of shitty things that people with internalized homophobia do to other people as a result. And I think as a kid, it's easier to excuse those things Mm. because you're still figuring yourself out you're dealing with the negative repercussions from society but as you grow older it becomes more and more your fault and your responsibility for the shitty things that you do Mm -hmm. because you have more awareness and knowledge and understanding and i think personal responsibility as you get older and so to grow up and then take these things and become republican and continue to wish that you were straight and to view your gayness as a personal shortcoming that's partially what you've decided for yourself yep yep Uh, uh, just uh, kyle (laughs) what (sighs) more thoughts okay so first so like we've had the conversation before about like if there were a pill that would make you straight would you take it and i think we both landed on absolutely not at least not anymore not anymore but also recognize that there was a time when we absolutely fucking would have taken it oh for sure right and sometimes at first because when i grew up when I realized that I liked boys, I, I prayed to God that I wouldn't, that he would make me straight. Mm -hmm. So there was absolutely a time where I was praying for this. Yep. Yep. And then even after I came out and started to get, accept myself a little bit more, I still was like, yeah, but life would be easier if I was straight. So there was still a point where I was dealing with this and just felt like life would be easier if I was straight. So I would still take the pill. Yep. And now I've gotten to a point where so many of the things I think so many things in life I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have these friendships. I wouldn't have this podcast. I wouldn't have a, a community. I wouldn't have fun in June. Like there's yeah. so many things yeah. Yeah. that would be missing from my life yeah. that, that I think I've gained fulfillment from being gay. Plus your prostate works. So. Oh my God. <laughs> and if I was straight, it'd be harder to accept that there's a little button inside your butthole <laughs> yeah. that feels good if you're not broken. If you're not broken. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I'm broken, everybody. Um, okay, so it makes me so sad when I see people think things about themselves or others that is just based on a lie, that's based on factually incorrect stuff. Mm. And, You're an engineer, so that's the way your mind works. It, and But the idea that you have any control over your own sexuality whatsoever, you do not. Right. Like study after study after study after study, you do not have control over your sexuality. And all attempts to change it fail. So to view your sexuality as a personal shortcoming is just incorrect. Right. It, it, that it, it's just not. Right. 
so the very the very premise that those people that you're referring to is wrong right and <laughs> but how do you convert that there there's a difference between believing a fact or understanding a fact and then internalizing that and making it feel true so they haven't taken the next step or maybe they don't know the facts maybe they, they don't understand the basic premise that you're outlining yeah. And they also clearly have not taken the next step of then trying to deconstruct that feeling that they have. Can I just shake them? Yes. I know that's probably assault. But <laughs> yeah, like... Probably. Depends on how hard you shake it. <laughs> uh, it's just so upsetting. It's hard. And then I and then I wonder, this is therapy. A lot of therapy, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Betterhelp.com slash gayish. Yep. And then I wonder, like, what is the thing that I believe that is absolutely factually incorrect? Oh. Am I capable of that? Of course I am. I'm a human being. Where are those blind spots? I, I wish I could know them better. Yeah. Um, Or maybe I'm just perfect. Yeah. We'll go with the second one. <laughs> okay. I, that great. second option is a lot less work on your part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kyle. <sighs> um... I don't know where this fits in, but I have this quote and I really, really, really want to talk about it. Okay. There's a psychologist who is trying to say that he does not believe in one big slice of what we label as internalized homophobia. And it's the hyper-masculine overcompensation for gayness as being an explanation for uh, or internalized homophobia as being an explanation for that behavior, right? Like, so the the guy that has like truck nuts on his on his on his truck and goes hunting every weekend, or like, or whatever that like yeah. the performative masculinity as a internalized homophobia. That his his quote that sailed out to me from this this thing that I read was it makes no sense because the corollary makes no sense to say that somebody is trying so hard to look gay they must be straight is dumb right what do you think i disagree with that because like the of course you're you're not trying to it makes sense that people wouldn't perform gayness because gayness is what is treated as bad in our society it makes sense that you would perform the thing that society rewards hmm so of course the corollary isn't true because they're not equally rewarded in society. That's a dangerous message that the right is trying to propagate that like people people want to be gay because like it's trendy. Right. Or, or or cool or socially advantageous or beneficial in some way. Yeah, yeah, they they see some of the progress that LGBT people have made in terms of visibility and representation or even laws that are being passed and assume that is privilege that we have when really it's just we're getting to a more equal place mm -hmm. and they think that we are rewarded for society rewards us for being gay when that's not true. Yeah. Ugh. What do you think about that quote? Um, I think I, I also think that he's wrong. I, I didn't, I didn't come to the conclusion that you did of it being about like, uh, uh, you would only perform that which society would 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 um reward. Yeah. Um, I think you're super right about that. I just thought, well, for one thing, part of it there is the belief that it's a choice at all, right? That like the person who is totally femmed out, totally has a lispy voice and a limp wrist, and is. A, a power bottom like whatever 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 behaviors you want to pile onto this person as being like the most stereotypically gay 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 person yeah and then say that they must have chosen each of those things about themselves i i think i think that's dangerous and wrong mm. right I, I like i think I mean, there might be some projection here i think that there are lots of just super straight bro dudes who act in super straight bro things and it's not performative, that's just who they are. Right. Um, so the idea that either side is choosing all of these things, I, I, I think is, is wrong and dangerous. But I don't know. I think 
this is about what society influences you to do. And I think society influences you to perform masculinity. And even, I don't know that you may be choosing it. Oh, I'm going to go watch football every weekend because I want to present masculine, but you may show up every time because that's just what is expected of you. And it may be a, a, like a subconscious thing. Hmm. And can we know? Can we know the difference? And can right. we know? I, I just think so much of internalized homophobia is not, I hate myself. Hmm. You know, it's not like that simple. <laughs> Who is that voice? Who? I don't know. <laughs> no. I'm Aww. gay and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Humphrey, okay. who goes, hmm, at the end of every sentence. Hmm. I hate being gay. Hmm. <laughs> But it's but it's not that I think it's more on a subconscious level, both internalized homophobia and masculine presentation because of society's influence on us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, I have a couple of people that I would put in my fourth bucket. OK, that I want that I want to talk about. Oh, uh, I'm interested in this. My, my fourth bucket was people who are not out, but are homosexual. And that turns into them attacking the LGBTQ community. Do you know who Ted Haggard is? No. Uh, so Ted Haggard is, uh, he was born uh, in 1956. So he's 67 years old. He's the founder of New Life Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Okay. And is a founder of the Association of Life-Giving Churches. Uh, he served as president of the National Association of Evangelicals, Evangelical Christians, from, mm-hmm. ni- from 2003 until November of 2006. Now... Uh, you can guess what he thought about gay people. And he and his church supported Colorado Amendment 43 to the Colorado Constitution, defining marriage as between one man and one woman. And uh, he uh, was in a movie called Jesus Camp, (laughs) which is a a documentary. (laughs) And he said, quote, we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. He's opposed opposed to same sex marriage, and uh, anyway, he he like dick back fuck face asshole of like two thousand six ish. Anyway, made national headlines in November of two thousand six when male prostitute and masseur Mike Jones alleged that Haggard had paid him for sex for three years and had used him to purchase crystal meth. <gasps> and there's this whole this whole thing that that uh, that that went down so the the masseur mike jones the escort said that he'd only learned who haggard was recently at that time and said quote it made me angry that here's someone preaching against gay marriage in colorado and going behind the scenes having gay sex and then he he, he also told abc news quote i had to expose the hypocrisy He's in the position of influence of millions of followers, and he's preaching against gay marriage, but behind, behind everybody's back, he's doing what he's preached against. Yeah. This is the only kind of outing of someone that I agree with and support. B- because, of the, because of the level of influence? Yes. Yeah. The level of influence, the hypocrisy, the position of power, the, the attacks against our community. I think when all those things combine, then it's okay to out someone like that. Well, when uh, when this guy came forward, Haggard's immediate response was denial. He told a Denver, a Denver television station, quote, I did not have a homosexual relationship with a man in Denver. I am steady with my wife. I'm faithful to my wife. I've never done drugs ever, not even in high school. I didn't smoke pot. I didn't do anything like that. I'm not a drug man. We're not a drinking family. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't socially drink. We don't socially drink. We don't have wine in our house. We don't do that kind of thing. And then a bunch of evangelical leaders also came out of the woodwork to support him. James Dobson issued a statement of support for Haggard. He's a dickbag fuckface asshole. <laughs> um, but uh, he said, quote, it is unconscionable that the legitimate news media would report a rumor like this based on nothing but one man's accusation. I actually agree with that. Uh, oh. Ted Haggard is a friend of mine, and it appears someone is trying to damage his reputation as a way of influencing the outcome of Tuesday's election, especially the vote on Colorado's Marriage Protection Amendment, which Ted strongly supports. Then the (laughs) the escort, Mike Jones, released a voicemail, and it is clearly Haggard's voice, (laughs) asking him to get him more meth. Now, Haggard's response to that was, quote, I bought it. 
but never used it. <laughs> yeah. I, sometimes I just like to have a little <laughs> meth in the house. Just freshen up the joint. In not ca- to do anything with. In case some drug friends come over. Yeah. I, I can't not be a good host. Yeah. Yeah. I got <laughs> wine in case you want it. Yeah. <laughs> and a just light amount of meth in case you need it. Um, He he claimed I was tempted, but I never used it. I bought it, but then threw it away. Mm-hmm. And um, he added that he had never met his accuser. So Mike Jones then went on a KHOW radio show hosted by Peter Boyles and took a polygraph test <laughs> on the air. And um, all of the stuff about drugs, he passed. The polygraph passed. Okay. When it got to the question of, uh, did you have sex with him? He said yes, and the polygraph said that there was deception involved in that answer. I'll get that. What? Do you, but we know that polygraphs aren't accurate. Polygraphs aren't accurate. Uh, it was on a fucking radio show. It's not uh, like how, how they're usually administered. Right. Um, anyway, so then Haggard went on leave from the church, said, I'm voluntarily stepping aside, blah, blah, blah. I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get down, down to the, to the end of it. Basically, eventually, uh, in uh, as late as 2000, uh, uh, 2009, uh, Haggard admitted that he, yes, indeed, had purchased crystal meth from this this escort, that, yes, he had indeed ingested it, so he used it, and he admitted that they had had sexual relations, mm-hmm. but it was only handies. <laughs> so he, That's so much better. He admitted that he had been masturbated by this sex worker many, many times. Many, many times. But, but... It was just jerking off. Yeah. And that, some people say that that explains why the polygraph went Mm. awry when he was asked, did you, did you, did you have sex with him? And he said, yes. Does he think that hand jobs are sex? That's probably what was going on in his head at the time when the polygraph is going crazy. It's like, well, if it was just handies, does that count? I don't know. That shows up on a polygraph. Yeah. Mike, side note, is a hand job sex? Yes. Okay. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh. But I, my personal definition of sex is mm-hmm. anything that can lead to an orgasm. Yep. I can and I have and I will and I do. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, he's not the only one, Ooh, right? Like there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's plenty of people in this space. Do you know, but do you know who I'm going to talk about next? No. I, 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 I think that we can't exit a section that is about people that are in this bucket without talking about former Congressman Aaron Schock. Oh, right. Unfortunately, very hot. Very, very hot. So annoyingly hot. Annoyingly hot. But uh, if if you don't know, because it was it was several years ago now that that all of this was going down. Uh, Aaron Schock was the uh, Republican U.S. representative for Illinois' 18th congressional district from 2009 until 2015 when he resigned. Um, the HRC gave his voting record, his legislative record, a zero. He <laughs> voted against. Every single bill that would further LGBTQ rights. Damn. And then, uh, thanks social media, um, <laughs> as early as 2004, there were questions about his sexual orientation, um, especially in as much as it related to his very conservative voting record on on all social issues, but, but queer issues in particular. Uh, in 2009, Details Magazine asked him about it, and he said, I am not gay. Uh, but then in January 2014... Uh, there was a journalist named Ite Hod who posted on his personal Facebook page uh, that there was quote an a an a a nameless Republican congressman from Illinois who votes against gay rights uh, was was caught showering with his male roommate and visiting gay bars Ooh. that caused the New York Times to look into it a little bit. Um, ultimately, he was. He he left Congress though because of misappropriation of funds. Do you remember what he did with them? Oh, didn't he use them on travel with him and his personal assistant? Nope. Oh, different guy. That's Matt Gates. Oh, or, um, Matt Gates. No, but no, that's not it. Okay. He he used campaign funds to redecorate his office like Downton Abbey. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> no. That's the gayest shit ever. It's the gayest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, he's he spent. He spent a bunch of money renovating his office at the at Congress to <laughs> look like the set of Downton Abbey. 
uh, anyway, he he was he was he ultimately uh, left uh, because of that. But um, then he was see he still denied that he was gay, uh, and and uh, ultimately then was filmed, and that was posted to social media. Uh, um, uh, he was with a bunch of gay dudes at Coachella. Uh, there was a video of him kissing and fondling another man at Coachella. Uh, there was a video that was released that showed him tipping a male go-go dancer at a gay bar in Mexico City. And uh, he was at uh, several dance parties in Los Angeles. And he was outed in part because, just like you were saying, like there are times when it's okay to out somebody. Yeah. He had been such a dickbag fuckface asshole about legislation for, for gay rights. He ultimately came out. He posted on March 5th of 2020 that he was gay in an Instagram post. And uh, he did express some regret. He said that if you quote, if I were elected to Congress now, I would support LGBTQ rights in every way I could. Hmm. Hmm. That's, you know, the Jojo song too little too late. No, <laughs> just a little too late. Yeah. That's too little too late. A little right? too late. Yep. Um, this also happens a lot. Mm. Right. And it's always the goddamn Republicans. Yep. Do you remember Senator Larry Craig from Idaho? No. He was caught doing the foot tap under the stall mm. at a men's restroom at an airport. He was a Republican white dude from Idaho in the Senate. Yeah. I think the phenomenon of this happening to Republicans over and over and over again is internalized homophobia en masse. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. For sure. Same with Catholic priests diddling boys. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick out any stories of particular Catholic priests. There are too many to choose from. It's a tsunami of horrific bullshit. Yeah. But uh, for the Catholic Church to then say, you are gay. It's okay to be gay. You just can't act on it. But the priesthood is an option for you, which is what they were actively saying in the 50s and 60s, especially to 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 Catholic gay men, people who, who expressed same-sex attraction. You can't choose your sexuality. That's a ticking time bomb. And and uh, I, I think that the idea that you're going to go into the clergy as a way to keep that under control, that's internalized homophobia yeah. also. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, that's a bunch of examples. Um, and uh, the thing is, it doesn't, it doesn't take very long to find them. There's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these stories to read about. I thought th there's a bunch of stories about people who ran like ex-gay ministries mm -hmm. that ended up being, they they were like, nope, I actually didn't change my orientation, still gay. Yep. Whoops. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. You can't change your sexual orientation, everybody. You can't. It is what it is. Get on board or don't, but it's probably better if you try. Yep. <laughs> um, I want to tell you how internalized homophobia manifests. Yeah, do it. Because like I said, like there's a, a ton of the big list of ways, and I might just power through them real quick. But anyway, it's not just I hate myself. Or yeah. like for the first couple, denial of your sexual orientation to yourself or others. Attempts to alter, change your sexual orientation. I think that's, those are the little bit more clear cut internalized homophobia but the next one on the list feeling you are never good enough oh god i don't like that right like there are different ways and this is where i talked about it being a little bit more subconscious kind of thing that's a little less direct that's a good example of ways it manifests that may not be as obvious is imposter syndrome the other side of that coin or the same side of that coin is mm, that, it, it must be it must be right yeah that's wild okay good. yeah um, engaging in obsessive thinking or compulsive behaviors. Okay. You say that right as I under the table am picking at my skin because I'm anxious. Oh, and nervous. But I, yeah, I, I'm literally picking at my thumb right now too. I, I compulsively pick at my cuticles. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do too. Underachievement or overachievement as a bid for acceptance. Oh my God. The overachieving gay. My goodness. Best little boy in the world theory. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is actually what it's called. It's for sure a thing. Yeah. Oh my God. There's this guy, who, like a, a fuck buddy, f a friend with benefits. Um, who, who, Like, oh my God. Is this? Is this. Or a uh, fraternity brother. Ooh. Shouldn't say his name. Okay. You can beep it. Okay. But I'm talking about. Oh. 
he's like 29 years old and is like a vice president at a college now because just like bent on world domination it's that for sure mm. um let's and see then, and then under underachieving underperforming i don't know it's yeah i haven't thought about the underperforming part i've thought about the overachieving part but yeah what is that about what do we think that's about is that like because society rewards people who do well the visibility of that is uncomfortable so you fly into the radar by not drawing attention to yourself by succeeding that's or it's like cool to be an underachiever it's cool to be a slacker so i'm counterculture get, yeah mm. yeah okay um another way low self esteem negative body image well okay check and check Kyle check yep <laughs> this is what you talked about contempt for the more open or obvious members of the LGBT community and this yep. could be this is the even if you're out and gay the more obvious members the more out members the more flamboyant members the more feminine members of the community yep well I also remember had a gay shirt tail relative like by marriage not not like related related but who was in the mix of stuff and I remember when um, my my ex and I uh, went home I didn't think that we were being particularly overt with each other but then this person told mom who then told me like I cannot believe how gay they're being <gasps> but that's that's this yeah. yeah wow like we're not supposed to stand next to each other or touch each other we're in eastern Washington come on like, yikes yeah. that's ugh. let's see becoming psychologically abused or abusive or remaining in abusive relationships? Mm. Increased fear and withdrawal from friends and relatives? Well, yeah. Okay. I definitely feel that. Like, I withdrew from friends that I went to high school with because I didn't know if they would accept me or how they would feel about me being gay. Yep. yep. Um, or, like, a, a strong uh, tendency to minimize gayness when when you do absolutely yeah minimize gayness must be somewhere on here um shame or depression defensiveness anger or bitterness what are you talking about kyle i'm not like that <laughs> you're right i'm ashamed i said that <laughs> um continually self-monitoring your behavior mannerisms beliefs and ideas oh god it's the worst i do that at work for sure oh yeah mistrust and destructive criticism of lgbt community leaders it's similar to like attacking people because of their more, more they're more gay. Mm -hmm. Mistrust. Hmm. Um, reluctance to be around or have concern for children for fear of being seen as a pedophile. Oh my God. That's real. That's real. That's real. And super sad. Yeah. Unsafe sexual practices or other destructive risk taking behaviors. Okay. There's. Uh, okay, so th that would include like drugs and alcohol then. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, risk-taking behaviors for sure. Drugs, alcohol, sex, shopping, gambling. Yep, yep. Mm. yep. All these things you're trying to fill a void of feeling that you have for... When, when you should shame. just be filling that void. When you should fill that <laughs> void. Well, sometimes <laughs> self-destructive behaviors can look like lots of unprotected sex or risky sex. Um, oh, it says on here substance abuse, including uh, drinks and drug drinking and drugs. Uh, thinking about suicide, attempted suicide. Yeah. Death by suicide. That's wild. Yeah. So those are just some of the ways that internalized homophobia can manifest. So I relate to this list in that I think that I have come a long way in my acceptance for myself and being gay and also struggle with a lot of these things on this list. And there's there's so many remnants of my internalized homophobia or or not remnants like the struggle I went through hating being gay and hating myself are still present today in yeah. the form of internalized homophobia that I still have to wrestle with in spite of being out since I was 19 in spite of accepting that I am gay in spite of being in relationships with gay men in spite of having gay friends and liking that I'm gay now and not viewing it as a something 
shameful. Like <laughs> doing a gay ass podcast. Doing a gay ass podcast. For tens of listeners. <laughs> so many. <laughs> Mere dozens of listeners. Um, yeah, in spite of all that, I still am wrestling with this shit that I went through growing up, which sucks about how those formative years have such a big impact on the rest of your life that you can spend the rest of your life untangling what happened to you during childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, straight people do too, but sure. it's a different different level, I think. And they don't have to wrestle with this. Like we have to wrestle with all the same things that straight people wrestle with. And we have this extra thing that we have to wrestle with. Yep. And that's the privilege, the straight privilege that they have. Mm, wrestling. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Kyle. Why did I wait until I was 30 to come out? Why did you? Why did I join a fraternity? Oh, was that part of compensating? I, I what? I, maybe. Hmm. Why did I get married to a girl? Hmm. I am always surprised. You've said this on other episodes. How early you were out to yourself? Yeah, I knew. I knew. I knew at eleven, twelve years old that I was that I was not like the other boys, and I was just so determined not to be gay. Yeah, just fought it and fought it and fought it. Well. At first, there was some denial. Like you have to do all of the stages of grief, I think, over and over again. But like in this in this area, first was denial. I thought I thought I just needed to hang in there, and that puberty was going to make me into chicks any day now. I had the same thing. I also was out to my or looking back on it, realized that I was into boys when I was about twelve years old, and thought any day now this is going to change. Yep, was just waiting for it to change. Yep, it'll be fine. Just wait. Just wait longer. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my my folks gave me a book that literally said in there that like it might be a thing that you feel that then changes. And that just gave me hope that it was going to change. Yeah. My dad implied to me, similarly, my dad implied to me that everyone goes through this and at the end of it, you will come out of it straight. He didn't say those words exactly, but that was the, that was the subtext of the conversation we had. Hmm. And I... I just, I, I didn't want to disappoint my family. I didn't want to piss God off. I didn't want Mm. to, uh, live the life of the, I, okay. I had zero role models whatsoever. Like the media landscape was very, very different. I turned 11 or 12 in 1989, right? Like think about like movies and TV and like gay people were a punchline at best. Right. And then I, at that time of my life, watched my great uncle and his partner die of AIDS. And, or looking around the community, there were zero out gay people in my little fucking shit ass town that I grew up in. So being gay meant you were invisible or a joke or dead. Hmm. I didn't want to be any of those things. Yeah. So I didn't. Yeah. Now, there were lots of like hyper masculine things that I could have been into, like sports or hunting, like that were in my life that I think that maybe dad would have wanted me to participate in, <laughs> that my brothers participated in way more than I did. And and so I, I didn't go like whole ham on like being a man's man. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I don't know why I didn't do that, but I lived in otherwise like very scripted, straight, life and I monitored my own behaviors and speech patterns and like I, I I worked really hard to despite myself do what I thought I was supposed to do. Yeah. So dated girls and joined a fraternity in college and got married to a woman and yeah. How long were you with her? Oh gosh. Uh uh, let's see. I I worked for the fraternity for a year after I graduated. So, um, which talk about like the overachieving gay. I was like, like I fratted the best <laughs> to like. You were the best frat boy in the world. Yeah. Um, but we. So I say I got off the road from the fraternity in uh, the spring of '02. So it was like May. And then I left her in November of 08. Um, I guess we started dating in like late 2002. So six years. Mm. It's like start to finish. Like we met that summer because um, we worked together. 
and then and then I left her in 08 and it took like a year for the divorce but whatever mm. um I don't know where I'm going with this this is super heavy Kyle it is ick <laughs> how do you think like I think of you as very well adjusted you <laughs> thanks yeah. this has been gayish <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody <laughs> um but I think of you as having your shit together, being self-confident, being, uh, you have good friendships and good job. Like, mm. how do you think this manifests currently? Or do you feel like you struggle with internalized homophobia currently? Interesting question. I know that I have mental health struggles that I are likely a function of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, the podcast has been really good for like, like confidence in my identity as a gay man. Yeah. Uh, one of the most helpful things is just the, the, the people who write in and are like, thank you for this. Yeah. Mental, mental health for sure. Sometimes I wonder if my, like, I don't want to be a interior decoration gay. I don't want to be a fashion gay. I wonder how much of that is internalized homophobia. Because mm. I do like nice things. <laughs> I like pretty things. I, I like when I feel like I look good. And I definitely do, like, from a certain perspective, it looks like I go out of my way not to <laughs> do that or not do that very often. I drive a 2005 Jeep. <laughs> like, <laughs> But you love your Jeep. I do love my Jeep. I do love my Jeep. And that's it's not a very gay car. Like it's, but we just dis discussed in our episode on Jeeps that it is kind of a gay car. Yeah, but in like a performative masculinity kind of like yeah. butch dumb way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the kind of guys I like butch and dumb. Butch and dumb. <laughs> um, And I think... I think some of my sex stuff, I think, mm. is is in this space. I know that we've joked before on the show about like, am I demi or not? Yeah. But I really, I really think that like, my knee jerk instinct about gay sex is that it's bad or wrong, mm. and I have to really work hard to feel safe and comfortable so that I can enjoy my sex life. And I, I think, I think. A, a big chunk of all of that dysfunction and weirdness is internalized homophobia, hmm. which is funny too, because I didn't, I don't remember getting any like big, powerful, like sodomy is bad. MK m like messages from anybody. But I think it's all tied together. If you're getting the message that gay is bad, you're also getting the message that gay sex is bad. It's either implied or sometimes directly stated. I think those go hand in hand. Yeah. 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 I don't know. How how about how about you? You've you've already talked about like anxiety and and mental health and, and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I think feelings of worthiness, like never feeling like I'm worthy enough, mm -hmm. I think that comes from internalized homophobia. Mm -hmm. And I think that then causes things like feelings of shame, that causes depression, that causes me to use substances and other things to help feel a little bit better about myself temporarily as you pour me a little bit more wine. Um, I think that a lot of what I unpack in therapy, my depression, my anxiety, my mental health struggles are fundamentally as a result of internalized homophobia. Mm. And I think it will be something I struggle with for the rest of my life. Mm. I don't th see it. I don't know. Uh, maybe this is part of the pessimism that comes along with internalized homophobia that I don't foresee a time where I don't have to wrestle with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it sucks that even though I have been out, for, I've said it as I've been out for so long and done so much work that I still am wrestling with the same childhood issues that, that I can't go back and fix. I can't undo those mm -hmm. no matter how hard I want to. Mm -hmm. um, I can't take the lessons I've learned now and reapply them to little me. Mm -hmm. And that sucks mm -hmm. that all that, that damage is done. And the only thing I can do is try to move forward from it and unpack it and 
learn how to believe or try to believe that I am worthy of love and self care and compassion and Mm -hmm. happiness. Mm -hmm. And those things are at a fundamental level, really hard for me to believe because of internalized homophobia, because I was taught at an early age that who I am is wrong. Yeah. Like, of course I, of course I feel unworthy because that I was taught that who you are is fundamentally wrong as a person. Like it makes sense that that's, that you would internalize that message and then start to believe that yeah. I prayed to be a different person. So of course I don't want to be the person I am. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Hmm. It sucks. It fucking sucks. It's not fair and it sucks. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Got a heavy sigh from our producer, Derek, there, if you couldn't hear it, which I agree with. <sighs> yep. Yep. Do you have more? I don't know. I didn't talk about the fact that there's a study that said that homophobic dudes were more likely to show increased penile circumference when they showed them gay porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a study that exists. But How do I sign up for that? Like, just, you know. I want to see gay porn. Yeah, measure my dick while I look at porn. Put some strap-ons onto my dick and measure my dick while I watch gay porn. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, there are studies, but I didn't I didn't need to get into that. No, I I think we covered a lot of it. I I don't I don't feel like what do you do about it? Maybe that's what we haven't covered yet and uh therapy is the only like I think betterhelp.com slash gay. You know. <laughs> I think being in that, that that's I think it would be a useful thing to just briefly touch on. Being out mm. helps. Mm, 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 mm. Being in therapy, being a part of the community and participating in whatever that way that makes you feel good. That could be going to a gay bar, that could be having gay friends, that could be watching RuPaul's Drag Race, that could be reading a gay book, that could be going out on Pride. There could be a million ways that being a part of the community helps but i think being around people that are more like you is useful yeah um what else yeah especially like people that are like you that are like happy (laughs) yeah yeah maybe like people that are more femme than you people that have been out longer than you people that are older than you like yeah the those kinds of people can help rub off on you Mm. (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah, and like a lot of things, just like being aware of the problem is sort of the first step. Yeah. Like ask yourself, what are the ways that this impacts me? Yeah. And what do you want to do about it? Yeah. And I think accepting that part of it was it was a defense mechanism that kept you safe for a brief amount of time. The reason that you did that was to like, you were probably in the closet to keep yourself safe while you're growing up. You didn't know if you were going to get kicked out of your home or bullied or what have you. So there was a value to it at one point in time. Yeah. And maybe it's not valuable anymore. Yeah. Yep. That whole thing about like when you have a defense mechanism that isn't helping you anymore. In fact, it's hurting you like do exactly what you just did and like find the reason, like the good reason that it might've existed and then say, thank you for that brain. Now stop. Now I'm <laughs> done with that. Yep. Thank you for what you provided me when you did. And I am moving on from that. And I think forgiving yourself. Yeah. Is oh, that's hard. It's the worst. Right? Yeah. Uh, should we take a break? Yeah. Let's take a break. And then like be mean to each other or something. Yeah, I'm going to internalize this line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the part where Mike and Kyle take. Are we back? We're back. We're back. We're going to do our gays and straightest. We're going to do our gays and straightest. But first, local gay bar review. Mm. Uh, I don't, this is one of those times when I was drunk and I don't understand my notes. So I'll just read it. <laughs> do you have like a local gay bar review spreadsheet that you keep I do. with your notes? Okay. I do. And okay. I try to take notes like the night of. Like, oh, that's smart. Because what are the chances I'm going to remember anything right <laughs> the next day? Uh, but uh, this is K Rico in Oakland, California. It's a small space, but seems weirdly high tech question mark. 
hmm, I'm literally the only person in here at eight o'clock, but it's a Thursday, so who knows? Three dildos. <laughs> I love that you had a question mark about your own self the entire way through. <laughs> yeah. Eight o'clock on a Thursday. I would think there'd be some people there at eight o'clock on a Thursday. Well, there weren't. There weren't. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey. Hey. Rate, review, subscribe, and recommend, you motherfuckers. Yeah, we haven't asked you to do that in a while. If you have, If you've been listening to this and are a fan of the show and have not rated, this is your sign. This is your time. Please do it. I know it takes a little bit of searching to find where it is in your podcasting app, but it takes five minutes or less, I promise you. And it helps show people that this is a quality, respected show. Yes. Your next grinder hookup needs to leave with us as a suggestion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and recommending to a friend, like emailing, we, I, I don't know. I think that, post COVID podcasting is rough because there were so many podcasts that came out during COVID cause everyone was home and you know, people weren't commuting. So there was less podcasting time and it's just, it's very useful. If you recommend this to a friend, text this to a friend, say you might like this episode or whatever, you know, whatever episode you think that may be or post to your social media and just say like, Hey, I love gayish. Check it out. That would really help us a lot. Yes, it would. Unless you don't like us In which you should case, do it. In which case, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> well, our website is gayishpodcast.com. Uh, you can find all of our socials, including Discord, Facebook groups, uh, Instagram, everything that we do at gayishpodcast.com slash contact. Our hotline, you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails, especially if it's your gayest and straightest, because we love those. Yeah. It's 5855-GAY-ISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rates apply. Our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. Our physical mailing address is Post Office Box 19882, Seattle, Washington, 98109. Do you want to do our gayest and straightest? Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Okay. Um, my gayest is has to be how much I love the new Beyonce song. Oh, the country one? The country one, Texas Hold'em. Yeah. It's I heard it in a gay bar when I was out with a friend, and I just since then I can't stop listening to it. It's been in my head ever since. I just can't get over that everybody seems so mad on the right right now mm. about why is a black woman got to be in country music. First of all, you're fucking wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, we stole country music from black people, but also not her first country song. What's wrong with you? Yeah, very true. Yep. Okay. Shove it. <laughs> Shove it up your hole. Shove it up your hole. Um, and my straightest is last night I ate frozen mozzarella sticks for dinner. Yeah, you did. That was it. Was so good. Good work. Thank you. <laughs> did you have like a marinara? I had ranch. Oh, ranch. Oh. I'm a ranch girl. Okay. I'm from Texas. All right. Yeah. Hidden Valley. Obvi. <laughs> Um, Go to hiddenvalley.com slash gayish for an extra <laughs> discount on Hidden Valley Ranch. Can you imagine if we had I would a love, ranch discount? I would love to be sponsored. <laughs> I used to get those giant, like double sized kind of ranch things because I ate so much ranch. Wow. <sighs> Hidden Valley, please sponsor us. I love your products so much. <laughs> would you ever consider just like a Capri Sun? Like put a straw in it and drink ranch? <laughs> like... I am now. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Uh, the gayest thing about me this week was going to Las Vegas last week for Valentine's mm. Day and just holding hands with boyfriend walking through a casino in Vegas and getting side eye and not giving a fuck. Yeah. Like, suck it. Internalized homophobia. Yeah. Good for you. So great. Yeah. Um, and then the straightest thing about me this week. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to deliver this because it, it's my it might not be very straight at all. It's just, I think, hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, introduced boyfriend to my Vegas family and. um the topic came up at dinner or whatever that uh, he's moving in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, you know, he, he's moving in. We're going to be roommates. And yeah. my, my eight year old nephew said, you guys should get bunk beds. <laughs> 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 you know what? Uncle, uncle Mike wants a little <laughs> bit closer proximity than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just the idea that I'd be straight enough to, share a room yeah <laughs> top or bottom bunk mike yeah. Yeah. oh well, verse switch off yeah. <laughs> yep uh we have a listener's gay so straight uh this came to us via uh the hotline yep yeah um says mike and kyle i literally hated podcasts until i found gayish i found my community and i can't thank you enough straightest wearing my tidy whities all last weekend like a true daddy <laughs> three days of bulge stretching <laughs> gayest 
working at a high performance race shop and giggling every time I search for BBC. Big block Chevy. <laughs> please, please come back to Chicago. I will quit my job to come see y'all. Dan P from Michigan. Hung like a door. My hookups. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dan. <laughs> thanks, Dan. And thanks for the dick pic. Thanks for the double dick pic. Yeah. Dude. Um, if you want us to play your gayest and straightest, leave it a voicemail on our voicemail. 5855 gayish. That's 585-542-9474 standard rate supply. Yeah. Um, I don't do that ever, but I still know the phone number. You've heard it at least 374 times, <laughs> Kyle. So much. <laughs> Um, I want to thank all the internalized homophobia, <laughs> all the therapists that help us unpack our internalized homophobia. Thanks to Aaron Shock, but just his abs. None of the rest of him. Yep. Not his brain or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and thank you to our super gap bridgers. Thank you to Kaylee Adams, Kit Oliver, Pip, Andrew Bugby, William Bryant, John Carly, Stephen Porchio, Stosel, Harry Shaw, Jonathan Montanias, Wadu Forsnail, Patrick Martin, Steve Douglas, Explosive Lasagna, Michael Covington, Just Jamie, Thomas B, Timothy Sora, Dusty Sands, A.E. Coleman, Chris Catchatorians, and Jerome, Jerome, Jerome. Jerome York, thank you for your support. Thank you for your money. Uh, that's it. This has been Gayish from the Chris Catchatorian Studios. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. Be you. Be you. The pill that would make you straight, would you take it? There's that thing. And then uh, I had something else. Hmm. Hmm. It's gone now. Sorry. Oh, no. If it comes back. If it comes back, I'll... Say it out loud. I will. Okay. Okay. Podcasting. Podcasting. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's going to bother me. Hmm. I'll just think. Let's Let's reflect. Let's sit in silence. I'm going to pour some more wine. Okay. (laughs) Do you want some more? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I always look for little things I can cut out and put in our after show little Easter egg. Mm-hmm. And here, you just gave it to me. Thanks, Mike. Great. You're welcome. <laughs>